Oilers up four on two. Hamilton to the right. Here's Flett cranking up. He scores! Cowboy Flett blasting past the right side of Gary. Back in 1974, Cowboy Bill Flett was on top of the universe. He was a tough-as-nails right winger with the Stanley Cup champion Philadelphia Flyers. Flett fought many battles during his career and won most of them. But Cowboy lost the biggest battle of his life when he passed away on July 12, 1999 at the age of 55. It started in 1993, when a severe ulcer attack almost took his life. Years of heavy drinking had finally caught up with him, so he sought the help of Oilers general manager Glenn Sather, who helped Flett check into a Betty Ford clinic, where he cleaned up his act. Despite not touching a drink in over six years, Flett soon paid for his past drinking habits again. In May of 1999, Cowboy went to the hospital with what he thought was a severe case of heartburn. But doctors discovered he was actually experiencing a life-threatening problem with his gallbladder. Two operations later, his condition was considered to be stable, but he was in need of an immediate liver transplant, as the gallbladder problem had caused his liver to fail. 18 days later, Fleck got the transplant, but complications from the surgery took his life. Flett was born in Vermilion, a small town in central Alberta, in July of 1943. He inherited his father's love of hockey, while also taking an interest in rodeo. He started riding as a teenager, and when hockey season wrapped up he'd ride rodeo in the summer. He wrestled steers, rode broncos, and roped calves. He also built up his strength while working on a farm, so it's no secret how his cowboy nickname came about. It was also obvious to people who met Flett off the ice. He wore typical cowboy attire, including his trademark black hat with a feather. Add to that his cowboy boots, jeans and thick black beard, and Bill Flett looked like he should be fighting bulls, instead of NHL tough guys. Bill even wore his cowboy boots on the golf course, and later in life wore spurs on his skates for old-timer games. For much of the mid-1960s, Flett was a well-traveled minor leaguer, who benefited from NHL expansion in 1967. After wrapping up his junior career with the SJHL's Melville Millionaires, Flett played in several minor league cities, before landing with the expansion Los Angeles Kings in 1967. Cowboy played four and a half seasons in Hollywood, proving to be an early fan favorite in the non-traditional hockey market. He showed good offensive upside too, scoring 26 goals in 73 games in his first NHL season, which was good enough to be named the Sporting News NHL West Division Rookie of the Year. He followed up his rookie season with a strong sophomore year, scoring 24 goals and 25 assists in 72 games. With Flett becoming a core piece, his summer rodeo activities were starting to concern Kings owner Jack Kent Cook, who threatened to fine Flett $1,000 for each rodeo he appeared in. Flett reluctantly gave in and hung up his saddle for good. He was an all-star in 1971 and set up Bobby Hull's game-winning goal. But after a slow start to the 1971-72 season, Flett quickly fell out of favor in LA and was traded to the Flyers as part of an eight-player deal. It turned out to be a great move for Flett, who scored a career-high 43 goals and 74 points during his first full season with the Flyers, often playing on a line with Bill Barber and Bobby Clark. It was also during his time in Philadelphia that Flett grew the beard that became his trademark. At a time when few players sported full beards, Flett's long hair and beard further solidified him as the NHL's number one cowboy. After his outstanding first full season in Philly, Flett's production declined dramatically in his second year as he scored just 17 goals in the regular season and went scoreless in 17 games in the playoffs. Nonetheless, Flett helped the Flyers win their first Stanley Cup, assisting on two Bobby Clark goals in the Flyers' Game 2 victory over the Bruins in the finals. But Flett didn't have long to celebrate the victory, as the Flyers traded him to the Leafs just six days after they claimed the cup. The Cowboy wasn't one to turn down a drink, and his hard partying ways, combined with his decreased production, made him expendable to the Flyers, who repeated as cup champs the following season. Flett was unable to find his scoring touch with the Leafs, netting just 15 goals in 77 games before being waived in the offseason. The Cowboy was claimed by the Atlanta Flames, where he bounced back with a 23-goal season. But Flett struggled in his second year with the Flames, and was sold to the Oilers of the WHA, where he rediscovered his scoring touch, netting 103 goals in a little over two seasons. He remained with the Oilers when they joined the NHL in 1979, but appeared in just 20 games before he was sidelined with broken ribs. He decided to retire, and accept general manager Glenn Sather's offer to become a scout. Flett finished his NHL career with 417 points in 689 games. Not bad for a man who planned to become a full-time rancher if he didn't make it to the show. After he retired, Flett's drinking escalated, ultimately leading to his premature death. Flett was the cowboy of hockey, but he always maintained that it was the real cowboys who were the toughest athletes in the world. He admired cowboys because they lived a life with no guarantees or contracts. They had to pay all their own expenses, and they had the highest pain tolerance in the world. 
That's all for this look back at Cowboy Bill Flett. Drop your memories in the comments, and please like and subscribe to support the channel.